Today on Sci Guys, a special Halloween episode of Glow in the Dark Slime. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Adam. On today's episode, we're making Glow in the Dark Slime. Oh! Oh. Photoluminescence is the emission of light from an atom or molecule that has absorbed energy, usually in the form of light. The equipment and ingredients you're going to need for this episode includes Elmer's glue, boric acid, glow-in-the-dark acrylic water-based paint, measuring cups and warm water, a couple of mixing bowls, and a spatula. The safety equipment you're going to need for today includes safety goggles as well as an apron or lab coat to protect from spills or splashes. Also, don't eat the slime. It's not food. It'll make you sick. The first step in our experiment is to add one cup of warm water to our mixing bowl. Then add one half teaspoon of boric acid to the same bowl. Mix them together until the boric acid is completely dissolved. Next, in your second bowl, add a little less than one cup of warm water. And an entire bottle of Elmer's glue. Mix them together. Once they're mixed together, add a healthy squirt of acrylic glow-in-the-dark paint. We suggest not using a wooden spoon to mix your solutions. The acrylic paint can permanently stain wooden utensils. The last step in our experiment is to pour solution 1 into solution 2. With your solutions in the same bowl, use your hands and mix them together. If the consistency of your slime is really sticky, rather than slimy, add just a little bit more water and mix it in really well. To charge up the slime so it'll glow in the dark, put it underneath an intense bright light for a minimum of 15 minutes. If you turn the lights off, your slime should now glow in the dark. As a second test in this experiment, we made a second batch of ooze, but this time we replaced the clear coat acrylic craft paint with a glow-in-the-dark acrylic wall paint that's meant for the interior of homes. The paint used in the second batch glowed a lot brighter and glowed for a lot longer than the original clear coat acrylic craft paint. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. In a previous experiment, we explained that when borax is mixed with glue, it links the glue molecules together into a long chain known as a polymer. These long polymer molecules can slide past each other, giving our slime its drippy and stretchy physical properties. But what makes the slime glow? The glow of our slime is luminescence. Luminescence refers to the general process by which a substance emits light when physically, mechanically, or chemically excited. Some examples are chemiluminescence, photoluminescence, and bioluminescence. Our slime in particular uses photoluminescence. There are two types of photoluminescence fluorescence, and phosphorescence. Fluorescence occurs in some substances when a photon of UV light strikes them, exciting an electron which then emits a photon of light of a different wavelength, usually one that's longer and lower energy level. A great example of this is when a UV black light lamp shines on a neon surface and it glows brightly. What's important is that as soon as the source of the UV light is gone, the fluorescence will immediately disappear. The ooze, on the other hand, utilizes phosphorescence. Phosphorescence is different from fluorescence because even after the light is turned off, the substance will continue to glow for some time afterwards. When a light shines on a phosphorescent material, energy from the light is absorbed, exciting the electrons in the material. Imagine this like an elevator. When the electrons gain energy, they move up to a new excited level. Most electrons will release photons of light as they return to a ground state. However, some electrons will move into a unique state which is between excited and ground. This state is known as a triplet state. Electrons in a triplet state have more energy than at ground level, and they really want to return to ground. However, this transition is energetically unfavorable. The electrons at triplet state will gradually return to ground over time, like a large group of people trying to get to the ground floor of a building using a very small elevator. This unfavorable transition can take minutes or hours, depending on the material. When the transition from triplet to ground finally occurs, a photon of light is emitted, causing the material to glow. Well, that's it for Glow in the Dark Slime. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future episodes. 
Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode, or about science in general, let us know in the comments below, or message us on Facebook, and we'll try to help you out as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. I, um, think you need this. Thanks. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.